Welcome back to Everlasting Summer, Part 31. I don't know why I sung that, but yeah, so let's get into it. I always start these things off awkward. <laughs> I plop down into the deck chair and close my eyes. My heart was heavy and my soul was being torn apart by vague expectations. From time to time I had a feeling that I was already dead, just without realizing it, and had been thrown into hell. But really, instead of trying to get out of here, I'm spinning on a diabolic roundabout, and it goes faster and faster. I'm becoming more and more involved in the life of this world and this camp. As if I had no past life. The real one. As if I was always interested in the opinions of others. Damn it, I never cared about it. Why right here? Why right now? I recalled the face of Lena, in tears. Eh, yeah, probably not the opinions of others, but her opinion was the one I cared about. I swear to God if you ask why. I heard fire footsteps, and after a while, Olga appeared. She looked at me for a few seconds, seemed like she was about to say something, but then just sighed, opened the door with her key, and went in. I followed her. Shapeless shadows, blurry memories, fragments of feelings and emotions swirled in my head for a long time. For so long that after a while I couldn't tell where I was or what's happening to me. The only salvation was sleep. Day six. We're almost done with this. We could finish this tonight if I really just keep recording. <laughs> I could. I woke up because somebody was shaking my shoulders. It was too hard for me to open my eyes, so I just whined pathetically. Get up already! You're going to miss the lineup! Once I realized that, that what Olga wanted from me, and what time it was, I rolled over to face the wall. I was so tired that I wanted to choke the camp leader, just so she would quit disturbing my recovery from a hellish yesterday. Semyon, get up immediately! I mustered up my strength, opened my eyes, and sat up. Olga! I understand, but I had a hard day yesterday. Can I sleep in at least today? I started pleading. It's out of the question. Lineup is mandatory for every pioneer. I'm not doing her voice. It feels like it's been a week since I've had to play this game. It's been since Thursday is when I recorded the last episode. So, yeah. And you've already missed it a few times. My head went out. Com my head went completely numb. So I just couldn't find any arguments against that. In a couple of minutes, we were already standing at the square. I dozed off, taking great pains to not fall asleep at my, on my feet, so I missed everything that Olga announced. The majority of the pioneers seemed to feel the same. Electronic yawned constantly. Lisa had huge baggy eyes. Only, El only Eliana seemed to be full of health and energy, as always. I swept my eyes over the lineup yet again and couldn't find Lena. That's odd. Generally, she's diligent she's a diligent and committed girl. It's unlike her to miss such events. On the other hand, that was way too much for her yesterday. Such stress. She's prob probably that fucking word. <laughs> oh, I don't swear very much during this. Uh -oh. <laughs> she's probably depressed. Although such behavior from her was very surprising. I mean, I said I'd suspected that she was not the kind of person she wanted others to see her as, but I never expected such a drastic change. Lena, amazingly, somehow reminded me of Elisa, even more harsh and brutal at times. And now I was not sure how to behave around her, I was simply afraid of her. Finally, lineup was over and the pioneers dragged themselves off to breakfast. Miku caught up with me near the canteen. Samyon, good morning, how did you sleep? Any dreams? How are you? Ready for breakfast? <laughs> oh, that voice. So fast. She does always blabber without a break, adding a cute smile at the same time. I'm okay, I answered lazily. Today is quite gloomy, maybe because of the weather. It's quite dark. It may even rain, so yeah, everyone is sad and gloomy. I thought maybe something happened, but no one told me what. Can you imagine that? Something happened, and everyone knows about it apart from me? I was sad about it, but then... Don't worry, you won't miss the end of this world. I delivered a snarky remark. Huh? <laughs> I looked like... 
It looked like she was so into her monologue that she was completely oblivious to everything around her. And if you're going to miss it somehow, I'll make sure to let you know. Nothing. Enjoy it. Wait, what? And if you're going to miss it somehow, I'll make sure to let you know. Nothing. Am I reading this right? Yes, I am. Okay. I marched to the canteen with a firm step, step to get my daily portion of fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. To my surprise, a seat in the far corner was free. I sat down and tried really hard to make a face that would let anyone know that there's no, there is really no need to come anywhere near me unless there was an emergency. I just wanted to sit alone and think. Moreover, keeping my mind off other things was making me less sleepy. Hi, mind if I join you? I did not notice Slavia standing there. Strange. Strange? Sure. I answered after hesitating for a second. Bad mood? A bit. Did something happen? Not really. You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. There's nothing to tell you about. We kept eating in silence until I asked, Where did you go last night? Me? Oh, I just wanted to be alone for a while. It's not like you. I felt a bit more lively. Really? Well, maybe. It's also not often that you're, so, that you're seen so gloomy. She might be right. Even the most unfavorable circumstances, I've always tried to have a positive outlook on things. Not that I was an optimist, I just try always I just bleh. <laughs> I just always tried not to feel too down. Keeping my previous life in mind, it's only natural. As soon as you let depression get a hold on you, the noose will start to look very appealing. <sighs> Perhaps. When Slavia was done with her meal, I was still poking the porridge with my spoon. I'll be going. By the way, have you seen Lena? Nope, why do you ask? I didn't see her at the morning morning bed. I can't speak. I give up. I didn't see her at the morning lineup. That's odd. It's not like her. Maybe you're right. I don't think it's a big deal to be honest. Yes, of course. I was just wondering. I sat for a few more minutes in place and then headed outside without finishing my breakfast. Today was quite gloomy. The first gloomy day during my time here. I'd kind of gotten used to the bright and burning sun. The heat that would only just subside by the evening seemed to be an irreplaceable compo <sighs> component of this place. Looks like even here the weather changes after all. Almost like it's matching my mood. Looks like just more proof that this place or its creators are sentient and have great stories to <laughs> stuff with that. It's 4 a.m. <laughs> I have great storytelling skills. I don't know why I always record these like so late at night, but yeah. Sometimes I really wanted to focus on a single theory of mine, concentrate on it, and forget about all others. Just to decide for myself that it's all done by aliens, or I'm in a parallel universe, or witchcraft, or military experiments. Just to pick one and be done with it. To stop thinking about all possible explanations to the solution, constantly jumping from one to the other just to focus on a single one. But it's impossible. I have, almost, no facts about anything. Nothing extraordinary has happened to me here yet. Yes, some odd things took place, but, but they can and do happen in the real world too. After yet another cycle of similar thoughts, I found myself at the bus stop of Route 410 and the gates to, of, the Savia, of, of the Camp Savionic. No answers, no hints, no clues. I was walking wherever my legs were taking me. It was quiet in the residential area. Not a single person there, to be precise. My astonishment grew even more when, ele when Electronic appeared around the next turn. I didn't have the guide up, now I do. I don't think I have anything left to do except maybe one choice, but I'm I've got the good ending anyway, so I wanted to call out to him but stop, because he was going a little too confidently in an unknown direction. 
It's strange. That goes against his nature. He seems like a pretty confident guy to me. I don't know about you, Samuel, but... Anyway, what can I talk with Electronic about? And yeah, I'd have to start the conversation first. Seems like I was completely in despair. However, it would be interesting to follow him and find out where he's rushing to. If I get this choice, I'm following him. As a child, I liked games of spies, and here is a chance to put myself into a real spy's shoes. I decided not to seek and hide in a special way, and just hailed him quietly at a distance. Soon we came to the library. Electronic knocked and went inside. I stood behind a big tree so nobody could see me, and began to wait. He was absent for quite a long time. Perhaps this is a stupid idea, because, in fact, what difference does it make if does it make if he went to the library? Maybe just to get maybe just decided to get something to read. He was walking fast, so what? Perhaps he has some business afterwards. My thoughts were disturbed by a loud door slam. That actually scared me. It's all quiet and then suddenly I looked towards the library and saw Electronic running away from there, and Xenia, who ran after him, shouting along the way. I don't want to hear any of it anymore, or to see you either. They ran past me, but naturally, they were so involved in chasing that they didn't notice me. The whole situation seemed very funny, and I decided that I, I needed to find out what the matter was. I wonder where, electron where could Electronic be running to like that? It doesn't tell me where to go. I'm gonna say the clubhouse. Yes, it is quite obvious that he ran straight to his native cybernetics club. I entered without knocking, but didn't find anyone inside. Electronic, it's me. The sound of footsteps came from the next room, and soon Electronic himself appeared. Hi, Simon. I'm just. His eyes ran. His eyes ran guiltily, and his shirt had visible traces of sweat. Going in for sports, I see. Sprinting. I. You saw that? He asked, doomed. Yes, purely by chance. So I had to stop by and ask how you were, how you were doing, and what happened. Nothing special, really. Indeed, fleeing from an angry librarian. It's nothing. You can tell me. I smiled disarmingly. Really? And you won't tell? Of course. Silent as the dead. Cross my heart. Seems I exaggerated there. Did I skip one? It felt like I skipped one. No, okay. It seems I exaggerated there a bit, but looks like I had convinced him. It had convinced him. Okay. He took a deep breath, gathered str gathering strength. You know, I've liked Xenia since the first day. Those words, I wanted to fall through the floor and start rolling around, shaken by violent attacks of laughter. But out of respect for him, I refrained. Still, his next few words passed. His next few words flew past my ears. And so I just decided, well, you saw what happened next. A brave fellow indeed. Well, you... Try harder, I guess, and you will succeed. I patted him on the shoulder, trying really hard not to laugh. Thank you for the support. He smiled sadly. Okay, I have to go. I have some work to do. I shot out of the clubhouse like a bullet and finally laughed out loud. However, however if you think about it, Electronic and, Xenia, Electronic and Xenia would make a wonderful couple. They're actually a perfect match. It's strange that Xenia rejected him. There's no slash S after this, I can't tell if he's being sarcastic or not. I was going towards the square, thinking further about this episode. The 31. At the end of the day, Electronic is not such a simpleton. Just like that, he declared his love, even realizing that refusal will follow. On the contrary, is it because he just he's just as simple as an apple pie? Either way, you can feel the honesty and sincerity in his behavior. More complicated people would spend hours, days, months, and years even thinking about years thinking about how to present this in a better way, what consequences it would have, and whether you should even bother. Done that a few times when when I was in high school. <laughs> I would do so myself. No, rather, I have done so. But he just said it. Unsuccess unsuccessfully, of course. But it could have gone differently. Uh, it could have also gone differently. And that's the mentality to go with. These thoughts made me completely melancholy. So much that the lunch signal, 
usually so anticipated, didn't trigger any emotions at all. Uh, I guess it's lunchtime. The canteen was chock full. It seems that the camp was slowly emerging from the morning depression. Maybe the sun that had come out from the clouds contributed to that, or maybe something else that I'd missed while running after electronic. Only the places next to Oliana and Lisa turned out to be free. The two voices I hate. Actually, I can do Oliana's voice pretty easily, but Elisa's voice is no. I braced myself and started walking towards them. Eating was still a necessity. Can I sit with you? No, oh, just sit down. Why are you so gloomy? It's just that you are too cheerful. I'm trying to maintain the energy balance in the universe. Liana giggled. Oddly enough, the girls do not pay any, any attention to me and talk about their own concerns. At first I thought it was good, but then I started to think that they were just talking, taking no notice of me. By the way, where's Lena? Because of all my thinking, I would completely forgotten about her. I don't know, Elisa answered absently. Is she still not appeared? As you can see. I took a look around the canteen, but didn't see her anywhere. Why was her voice male? <laughs> I can't do Elisa's voice anymore. I'm just... Nope. Though by now I've lost almost all the voices, so yeah. And nobody's heard anything about her? No. Don't you find it strange? What's so strange? Maybe she's reading. Maybe sleeping. Or something. Seems more like you're talking about yourself. Oh, sh Liliana wouldn't read. <laughs> Unless she's reading up on how to make bombs. It's none of your business, is it? At least interject interjected angrily. Well, if a person is missing... You weren't so worried when Shirk disappeared. That's quite different. Yes? And why, I wonder? I had no answer, and just blankly looked at Elisa before going back to my food. Because you like her! She did not insist on continuing the conversation. Lunch was over. I silently stood up and went out of the canteen without a goodbye. So, Lena disappeared. What should I do now? On the other hand, why should I do anything? Because you like her! Why me? Where am I and why I'm why am I here? Who are all of these people? One cannot be absolutely sure about whether sure that? Where did a boat come from? One cannot be absolutely sure whether Lena is what she seems. Perhaps all this doesn't exist, so why should I worry? However, for me now, Lena uh, is still the same Lena. The modest, quiet girl I met on the first day. And even her strange behavior could not affect my attitude towards her. In the end, it's not certain that I still exist. So while the world is logical, at least to some extent, I have to play by its rules. I quickly went to the camp leader's cabin. Once inside, I saw Olga lying on the bed and reading a book. Do you know where Lena is? No, why are you asking? She's nowhere to be found. She missed both breakfast and lunch. So what? She looked at me blankly. What do you mean, so what? When Shurik was gone, the whole camp was searching for him from the early morning. I don't understand you. There's something strange happening to the camp leader again. Again? She's behaving absolutely incomprehensible, illogically. Do you think it's normal? So where is she now? I don't know. Olga replied calmly. This is too much. I started to lose my temper. Ask Miku. She is in she is her roommate after all. That was a good idea, because obviously I would get no more no more answers here. I went outside, slammed the door, and went to look for Miku in Miku and Lena's cabin. It was nice that the orchestra girls had told me before where she lives. Oh, or orchestra girls. Where would the plural come from? Ah, don't do these things at frickin' 4 a.m. <laughs> uh, well, where she lives, which is why I was at the door of the cabin a minute later. I should have knocked, but for some reason I couldn't. Because you have no manner manners. After a few deep breaths, I knocked on the door several times. 
come in. I heard a familiar voice. I refuse to believe that Lena is this unorganized. Hi, do you know where Lena is? No, I haven't seen her today. You're looking for her, right? Don't you think it's strange? By that time, I'd started suspecting everybody of hiding information about Lena's location, of conspiracy, of involvement in me, in me being here, of Kennedy's assassination, and of hundreds of other terrible things. Do Russians really care about this Kennedy's assassination, or is it just because that's a big internet thing? I don't think Russians would really care so much about that. It's not their president. Or, well, I shouldn't say president. You know, we don't have presidents in Canada. Just, you know what I mean? <laughs> the government leader. <sighs> that face, man, I can't get over it. Well, you know, maybe. I thought she went somewhere, and then I just got lost in doing things. Breakfast, music club, helping to clean, and then lunch. And then, and then... Okay, I see. And what about yesterday? Was everything normal? Well, she came late, and immediately went to bed. I didn't even notice anything wrong. No chance of finding out anything here, either. Thanks. I have an idea where she might be. The, uh, whatchamacallit. Yep, that's a very descriptive Artemis. <laughs> the island with the strawberries. I said abruptly, and left. At that moment, it seemed to me that the missing Lena was the only living person in this pack of talking dummies, and I had to find her. However, it seemed almost impossible to do this alone, so I went for help. Who would be most willing to help me? Slavia? She's always willing to help someone. Of course, Slavia! Fucking right! <laughs> I decided that at this time, she would be engaged in cleaning something. For example, the square. So I went there. If you find- I swear to god. My sixth- My sixth sent down. My sixth sense didn't let me down. Hi. Hey. Have you seen Lena? No. Why are you asking? Nobody's seen her since this morning. She went absent during breakfast as well as during lunch. Strange. I also think this is, to put it mildly, strange. Can you help me find her? Oh, sorry. Maybe later? I've got cleaning here to finish. It was like a lightning strike. I took a few awkward steps back and ran away from this place. <laughs> No, that was not her. It was as if somebody had replaced her. Not only her, but also the other inhabitants of this camp. What is happening? The strangest, the strangest thing is that it doesn't have anything to do with me, but with Lena. Maybe she came, maybe she came here the same way I, as I did. Exactly. That could be the reason why she behaves quietly most of the time. Because that's, yeah, because you behave quietly all the time. No, wait. But what about her knowing Lisa? No, something does not add up. My head was going to explode, and I started to choke. After catching my breath, I looked around and found myself at the bus stop. I sat on the curb and covered my face with my hands. Why did you just suddenly choke? What? If before nothing had really been up to me... What? If before nothing had re really been up to me, it was going relatively smoothly, I get it now. Then now I was, as always, helpless. But the situation was totally different. Watching the battle fought from the side with no threat to your life, and being on the hot spot without being able to help the ones you care about are two different things. I was just sitting. Time passed and the sun began to fall. Probably dinner has already started. Although, what's the difference? I still don't want to eat. I stood up and trudged back to the camp on rubber legs. As always, the only thing left is to wait. I decided to go to the beach. While everybody was at dinner, I could sit quietly and think, think there. Although, what could I think about? Enough, maybe. Enough, maybe. What? However, my expectations were ruined. Were ruined. On the beach, I met Xenia which greatly surprised me. You also come here? She looked at me from behind her glasses. Do you think I'm not a human being? No, I don't mean that. Then what do you mean? Nothing. By the way, have you seen Lena? No. I see. What do you want from her? Well, nobody's seen her since yesterday evening. Do you think that somebody could get lost in this camp? She laughed loudly. Sure, succeeded. 
That was a special case. Those guys are two peas in a pod, and you never, and you never know what to expect from them. I immediately remembered the morning incident. Tell me, why were you chasing Electronic this morning? Xenia got uncomfortable. It's none of your business. I'm just asking. Because he's a fool. She turned away after the, these words. Maybe you shouldn't be so strict towards him. Even to me, it wasn't clear whether I'm defending Electronic or just keeping this conversation going. And how else should I treat him? Well, give him a chance. You know, such an act requires lots of courage. You say it as if it's something special, some kind of achievement. Would you be able to do that yourself? Well, am I going to have the achieve the game talk again? I didn't have this talk during Elisa because Elisa's route was, was my own route. It's different. Yeah. I thought I'd answer it after a while. I don't know. I haven't had the right moment yet. I hope you'll have it soon. <clears throat> Her voice is not like that. Screw it, Xenia said rudely, and walked towards the canteen. I figured it was rudely. It is Xenia we're talking about here. I sat down on the sand and thought. True that. Electronic was able to say it, but can I do the same thing? Well, you don't even know it, so probably not. That is the question. A big question. If I got the right moment, but which and when? It's always easier to think about something em eph ephemeral. E ephem ephemeral? Ephemeral. To get ready for dozens of possible situations. To predict the following events. For many steps ahead. But most of the time, it all goes differently. Even a small event is enough to ruin all of your plans. And if you're not ready to do it at any time, whenever, under any circumstances, if you are ready, only when everything is exactly as you had expected, it is unlikely you'd ever get anything worthwhile. I had that sentence flew over my head. I was just reading. <laughs> Therefore, the only correct answer to Xena's question was no. Not an ambiguous, uncertain, half-hearted, or forced answer. Just no. There is only a simple yes and a simple no. It's always been hard for me to understand that. Between these two extremes, I always worked at a great number of different answers, like maybe, perhaps, probably if, and not sure, but I will try. I was so absorbed with my thoughts that I did not notice how the darkness stole across the camp. Under other circumstances, I would have gone to sleep now. But looking for Lena at night was not a good idea. What? That's not a but statement. I got up and slowly wandered aimlessly. Soon the path led me to the sports ground. I stood there for a moment and was about to leave when I heard noises. Clap. Another clap. Something painfully familiar. I ran towards the volleyball court and saw Lena, who was unsuccessfully trying to hit the shuttlecock with the racket. I stood in shock for a long time. My head was completely empty. I just looked at her and felt a sense of joy. Joy at finding her. Joy at seeing her again. Finally, I came to my senses and decided to approach. But after a couple of steps, I stopped. What do I say now? Glad I found you? Where have you been? I was worried. For yesterday's conversation, it's very unlikely she wants to see me. And what if Felina asked And what if Lena asked me why I was looking for her? Why I was why I was worrying. I did not know why myself. Because you like her <laughs> Probably it's because she was absent for too long. Maybe if it wasn't her, but some other person who I know, I'd have been worried the same way. Maybe if I'd behaved differently yesterday, she would not have disappeared today. I'm not sure, but I'll try to come up with some something adequate. I took another step and stopped again. Probably, maybe, perhaps, I'm not sure. Again and again, these words appeared in my mind, in my life. Unconsciously, with, un unconsciously, without my will. But why? For what purpose? I have to make a decision, once and for all. Although, there are two simple words, yes and no. Finally, it's all clear. I went to the court, approached Lena, smiled, and said, 
something we'll see in the next episode. Thank you all for watching. Like, favorite, and subscribe. You can't favorite anymore. I don't know why I keep saying that. I don't like to say these other things. Blah, 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 blah. Thanks you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you 